Hello everyone, I'm starting a new lesson from History, Theme 6. That means Chapter 6, The Three Orders. So as we practice generally that uh, as I explain, I used to give you the question. So here also the pattern will be the same. Directly we'll go to the first topic of the chapter. That is, as you scroll down, you'll get it, an introduction to feudalism. So for this, you can take down a question. The question is, what do you mean by feudalism? Write its economic features. So as we got the question, uh, we have to answer or we have to say, what do we exactly mean by the term feudalism? And then also we have to write the economic features of it. So now from the book itself, the term feudalism is derived from the German word feud, which means a piece of land. In this way, feudalism was a system associated with land. It refers to a type of society which developed in medieval France and later in England and in South or Southern Italy. From economic point of view, feudalism refers to type of agriculture production which was based on the relationship between the lord and the peasants. Now when I say lord means the king, peasants mean the farmer. And then when you say relationship it means how or what kind of relationship do this uh, or do they have? That means the farmer between the farmer and the lord. If, uh, if the relationship is good, that means there will be very good production and if there is good production means economically that area will be very uh, you know developed so now peasants not only cultivated their own land but uh, of their lord as well now when you talk about a farmer a farmer basically you know cultivates his land but here in this in this part of the world what we are uh, what we came across is that a farmer basically is so close to the king that he used to cultivate his own land as well as the uh, land that belongs to the lord the lord provided military protection now see because the farmer does the work so the farmer is being protected by the uh, military that means uh, king's military in exchange of their labor service so the Lord also had extensive judicial rights over peasants. That means he, the king said that since you all are working under me, I will give you the protection. And because you are being protected by me means you have to work under me. So that is what, so you, that it is almost like give and take thing. Then the Lord has uh, the rights over peasants in this way what happened was that feudalism not only affected economic life but the social life of uh, the social and political life as well now uh, in one way we can say that the uh, the farmers are being protected but they are not free they are not free because they can't do any kind of job according to their wish even if they dislike the work they have to do it because the king is protecting them and because the king is being pro I means because the peasants are being protected by the king's army so the king has to do some kind of job that also without money so we reach the second part of the chapter that is second topic france and england so under this you write down a question how did gaul became france Question mark. What was the position of France by the 11th century? Now the Gaul. When I say Gaul, that means you can see the first word itself in the paragraph. It's given as Gaul. Now what is this Gaul? Now let's see. Gaul was a province of the Roman Empire. Now when you say Roman Empire, you can see it was exactly, it was exactly not France as it is given. How did Gaul become France? So it is said that Gaul was the province of the Roman Empire. This area had mountain ranges, extensive coastal lines. Extensive means it has a very, very 
a huge coastline coastal line means the area near the ocean it has got forests long rivers large tracts of plains good for agriculture now one germanic tribe that is the franks gave their name and made it france so you can see exactly it was gaul okay it was under roman empire but because of one type of germanic uh, one tribe that is from german they were known as franks f r a n k s and because of that because they become the part of it and they start ruling this area they name it as france now from the 6th century this region was ruled by uh, francais or you can see french christian kings the french had very strong relations with church now these relations were further strengthened when eight uh, means in 800 ce when king uh, you can see the name of the king is given so you can underline it now when the kill king charles mangi or charles mangi was given the title of the holy roman emperor by the pope to ensure his support now why this uh, why this uh, title was given now see here the pope in order to get the support of the king he he gave a title to this king saying that you are a holy roman emperor and these are all done so that they can be protected now in in 11th century a duke from the french province of normandy conquered the island of england scotland across the uh, narrow channel and thus the name was formed here and that is how the position of france started to come up so now the next topic is the three orders now what is this three orders now this uh, concept of three orders was laid down by a french priest now what did he do is that he believed according to him that he said that uh, there is a concept that people or whoever there are there they are all divided into three orders and these three orders you can you can uh, just say they are uh, belonging to these three orders you can divide these three orders according or depending on their work so now the bishop stated that uh, there these three orders of the society can be broadly divided into uh, the clergy the nobility and the peasantry so now the three orders are in the form of this only the cler the clergy the nobility and the peasantry so in other way you can say the first order the second order and the third order so we will be reading the first order so now let's see what is the first order as it is divided here also it's written that the first order is the clergy so under this you can take down a question the question is which was the first order of the medieval western europe discuss its role in the catholic church okay so now you might be thinking why i skip the pages i'm not skipping it i am going in a chronological order so in your book the second order is given right in the beginning so i'm just going to the first order and then i'll come to second order okay so let's see what is this first order so you got the question now as it is said the clergy was the first order of the medieval western europe now who are or what what type of people can be found in this in this first order it included the pope pope means you know the brahmin or you can say in uh, in hindu it is brahmin in christian they are known as either pope or pastors or uh, the fathers and all so now here the first one is the a uh, pope bishops and the clerics now they enjoyed a significant place in the catholic church the pope uh, was the head of the western church uh, he lived in rome now the bishops and the cler uh, clerics used to guide the christians in europe most of the village had their own uh, churches 
every Sunday, people assemble in the church uh, to listen to the sermon of the priest and to pray together. Then the church had its own rules. According to these rules, every person could not become a priest. Serfs, physically disabled and women could not become a uh, priest. Now, the first word is that serfs. Now, serfs means, you know, those people who work under someone, servants, we can say, or the, uh, the slaves. Slaves, physically uh, disabled and women are not allowed to become priest. Now, men who became priest could not marry. Uh, in religious field, the bishops were the nobles. Okay, so uh, you can see that bishops were the nobles or religious nobility as it is written in the book. The bishops had also or they also had vast estates like lords. Now when you talk about bishops, now they are nobles. When you say nobles means uh, almost a land, landlord type. Okay, they, they, they had a very big estate and they live in a grand palaces. Then uh, the church had the right to take one tenth of the total produce from the peasants. Uh, it was known as tit. Another source of income of the church was the endowments made by the rich for their own welfare and welfare of their deceased or deceased uh, relatives in the afterlife. So there are so many things that were started by these people. Now, first of all, in order to earn money, the church say that they had to means they uh, the church already laid down some rules saying that all the peasants have to pay at least some amount of their uh, product. That is a tenth share means the whatever will be produced will be divided into ten parts and then one part will be taken by the church. Another thing is that it is said that endowments made by the rich people. Now, this endowments means some kind of rule, some kind of regulation, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, some kind of demand is being made by the rich people. And this is made so that the, you know, the life of the rich people will become more pleasant even after their death. Right. So it is written so nicely that endowments made by the rich for their own welfare. Now, whatever rules, regulation, whatever way of earning money was made, it did not help the poor people at all, but it helped the rich people only. And the welfare of the deceased or uh, deceased relatives, deceased relatives means those who already passed away. Now, they even ask money on their behalf. So this is uh, this is what or who are included in the what is that? Uh, first order. Now, some of the important ceremonies were always conducted by the church, and uh, the church copied formal customs of the feudal elite. Means, you know, whatever style that they perform in the church, it was exactly copied from the feudal elite. Means, those people who are rich, those people who have land, land owner style, they are copying. The act of kneeling while praying means, you know, they used to pray in front of the God while kneeling and then their hands will be clasped. Clasped means we used to say join your hands. Now, exactly that is there. And while praying, they have to bow down. Now, it was exactly the replica. You can see replica means the copy of the way in which Knight conducted himself while taking vows of the loyalty. Now. Uh, this way of praying exactly was taken from the from the you know the soldier when the knight is being given some kind of award by the king the king uh, the king will be giving the, uh, something to the soldier now at that moment the soldier what does he do is he kneels down in front of the king then he just looks down or bows down and the king gives him whatever uh, award is being uh, means awarded to him so that that posture what the knight is being following they follow that posture for praying in front of the god right similarly uh, the use of the term lord for god was another example means you know the lord 
the kings used to be and the kings were called or referred as lord by the knights so the catholics also they started saying they started copying this term lord from the feudal elites because uh, for the king means for the knights king is their superior uh, superior and king is more powerful than the knight so they call him as lord and the catholics they thought the term lord also can be given to god so they they start calling uh, instead of god they start calling as lord so these are all being taken from the uh, you know the knight style or the feudal style the second order the nobility so this is the second order as you can uh, see it's already written the first order we just finished now let us see what is this second order take down a question which was the second order in medieval france question mark discuss the status of this order in society so let us see what is this all about okay who are the second order the nobility was the second order in the medieval france it is right that first order belonged to the priest but the central role in social process was played by the nobility uh, we are talking about that i mean we are we want to say that uh, we already finished that yes the what is that the priest belong means they they are the important part of the society but most of the things are carried over okay or uh, done by this people that is the nobility it was so because land was controlled by the nobility now you can see priest okay priest they they need something to eat and they cannot produce food on their own they have to depend on someone that is land and the land belongs to nobility and now nobility is the second you know the second position we can say and this nobility does all the thing that means they don't go for uh, what is that cultivation on their own yes they select some person uh, whom to give the land how much to give from which time to which time they can they can borrow the land what crops to be grown how much to be given to each they divide and means they decided the nobilities so then it is said that uh, as as we say that uh, it was because they control the land so they are they are most important now this control was result of the custom called vassalage so underline that vassalage now what do you mean by vassalage this question might be given so it is a very simple term a uh, vassalage means when the land is controlled by the nobility okay when the land is controlled by the nobility and whatever things have to be done is under the hand of nobility this particular practice is known as vassalage the french kings were linked to the people by vassalage which was similar to custom among the germanic people of whom the franks were one now very simple way it is uh, it can be explained that the kings of france and the people they are you know they are in relation but indirectly and then who plays a who plays a link between the kings and the uh, people or the peasants is the or are the nobilities and the practice of this vassalage means uh, the nobility give the land to the peasant the peasant grow something the nobility goes and get something from the peasants he gives some for himself and some he give it to the king this practice is actually taken up from germanic tribe under this practice of vassalage the peasants were the vassals of the nobles when i say vassals remember uh, they are the working people right they take land in rent they take land in lease all these things so now the nobles and the nobles were the vassals of king now in a simple way when you talk about vassalage means what the relationship so here i'll just talk in a simple way the king is the the king is the head we can say after the king 
the people are the head after the people uh, the peasants okay so uh, this is about a simple simple way of understanding but when you talk about the first order second order so here now see the french kings they will not go for the cultivation but french king has given all the lands to the nobilities now the nobility will not go for cultivation but he had given the lands to different different farmers or peasants so that work is done we are talking about vassalage so you have to understand now now vassals means uh, the king had given the land to the nobility nobility had given the land to the farmers now the farmers will grow something it will be taken not all but some parts of the production will be taken by the uh, nobility and he will keep some after because because why he is doing that because the land belongs to a noble and because it is produced on his land he has a right to take some shares so he takes it now the king has a right to take some shares from the nobles because the king had given the land to the nobles and thus the nobles have to pay something to the kings this is a vassalage so according to this promise the vassal would be protected by the lord and vassals would be loyal to him remember this now this is our relations okay promise has been taken that whoever works under king will be protected by the king so because of this protection you have to give him something as a symbol of uh, you know exchange and this and that now many elaborate rituals and uh, exchange of vows taken on the bible in church were part of relationship at this ceremony the master uh, gave the vassal a written character or a charter or a staff or even a clod of earth as a symbol of the land so what what i said is that uh, you know uh, when the when the transaction is being made or when the land or when the uh, when the property is being given to someone what is the what is the uh, you know symbol or how the ceremony is taken place that is what we are saying suppose the noble is giving a land to the farmer now there should be some kind of uh, some kind of uh, you know ritual so in the same way when the king gives some land to the noble there is some kind of ritual or ceremony so what are the things that goes on you know they read or uh, they will there will be some reading from the bibles then after that the master gave the vassal the master means here the king is the master the nobility is the vassal so the king gives some kind of some kind of thing to the vassal a king gave something to the nobility saying that this is a proof that i'm giving you a land and you have to serve me loyally okay so anything can be given a clod of uh, earth means a small a small piece of stone can be given to him uh, what is that even a staff staff means a wood or a stick is given as a symbol saying that from today onwards i'm giving you a land and you have to serve me loyally all this thing is done now we are reading the status of the nobility let's see what is the status of the nobility now nobility means uh, you know who are they nobility means uh, not the king but just below the king and above the peasants so let's see what kind of status they have they have a very high status and they enjoyed uh, during the medieval france means a very good very good status they they had it then the nobles enjoyed an absolute uh, or absolute and permanent control over his property he was free to raise troops known as feudal uh, levies he held his own court of justice and was free even to coin his own money uh, he was the lord of all the people living on his land he was the owner of uh, large tracts of land including his own dwellings his private fields pastures then homes fields of his tenant uh, peasants then his house was known as a manor then except uh, except of doing work on their own land the peasants were forced to cultivate the land 
uh, that of their lords. If required, they had to act as a foot soldiers also uh, during the time of battle. So this is the status of the nobility. Now I hope you understood, but if if you haven't, don't worry. I'll explain you in a simple way once again. First of all, when you talk about nobles, nobles has the right uh, to you know own a land. Means they are the permanent owner of some land. They have huge property. Besides that, they have they are free to raise their own uh, army. So this is okay. Uh, you can raise up your own army. That is not enough. They have the right to raise or make their own coins also, or money. Then uh, he, as he has a large tract of land that belongs to him, that means he's the owner of it. Besides that, he has a permanent uh, means. He has his private fields, pastures. He has his home, which is quite big. He has fields, which is given to tenants. So all these things belongs to him. And the house where he lives or the area where he lives is known as a manor. Now the farmer or the peasants they don't need to do work only on their land. They have to work in the pez in the uh, manor's land also. That means in the noble's house also. It is not necessary that a farmer will just work in his own piece of land, cultivating his piece of land, but he has to work under under the noble's land also if noble has got a land he have to go and work on it so even if the land is on lease or even if the land is on rent then also the farmer have to go and work under the noble that means after cultivating his land he have to go and cultivate his master's land too so that was the status of you know the um, nobles and that is the second order and and we came to know that this nobilities enjoy a really high status of life